Yeah, so we'll just start in another one or two minutes. Uh, we have close to 20, 21 participants now, so I will start. So hi, good morning everybody. And once again, thank you for joining us today. Uh, my name is Simrit and I work as a research associate with Alliance for an Energy Efficient Economy. And it gives me absolute pleasure to welcome you all for today's roundtable discussion on implementation strategies for India Cooling Action Plan being hosted by India Cooling Coalition. Now, this roundtable discussion is a part of the Forum on Energy Efficiency and Decarbonization, which is AEEE's annual flagship event, and it brings together um, thought leaders and industry experts to build a dialogue towards making India an energy efficient economy. And it gives me immense pleasure that we are kickstarting this conference with this session today with India Cooling Coalition. Now, ICC was formed in 2017 with support from Shakti Sustainable Energy Foundation. It brings together 20 non-profits, uh, research and academic institutions, and industry associations who are all extensively engaged in sustainable cooling research and application. And ICC envisions to fast track the implementation of India Cooling Action Plan through knowledge exchange and policy interventions. And it aims to ensure uh, thermal comfort, health and food security for all. Now, ICAP has been a pioneering effort by the Ministry of Environment, Forests and Climate Change uh, to launch a comprehensive action plan for sustainably managing India's cooling demand. And the significance of ICAP becomes even more relevant with in light of the latest international uh, commitments, such as the ratification of the Kigali Amendment to the Montreal Protocol and India's net zero commitment at COP26. Now, these are some of the aspects that we intend to cover in today's roundtable, and we are delighted to have esteemed Joint Secretary from MOEFCC, Sri Jigmit Takpa, with us uh, here today. And in today's roundtable, uh, we'll be hearing from ICC members on their ongoing initiatives that can support MOEFCC in ICAP implementation. Uh, this is across various thematic areas, such as space cooling in buildings, cold chain and refrigeration, transport, air conditioning, research and development, and servicing center. We also intend to deliberate on how MOEFCC can call on the cumulative and combined expertise of all 20 members to undertake cutting edge research, create consensus around data and assumptions, and run national campaigns. So without any further ado, I'll now invite um, our esteemed guest, Sri Jigmit Takwa. So firstly, thank you for joining us today and taking out the time for this discussion. I kindly request you to deliver the keynote address and maybe if you can talk about the significance in I of ICAP and how the implementation process can be streamlined. So over to you, sir. Uh, sir, you're actually on mute. I'll request if you can unmute yourself. OK, uh, thank you, Simrat. Uh, it's a really uh, honor for me to be invited for today's a roundtable discussion on India's cooling coalition uh, that uh, feed uh, 2022. 
and it's a uh, bit honor for me and to be participating in this round table discussion towards the implementation strategies for indian pulling action plan that is icap uh, as most of you are aware india is one of the uh, first country in the world to launch a comprehensive pulling action plan which has long term vision to address the pulling requirement across sectors uh, such as residential commercial building cold chain refrigeration transport and uh, industry encompassing reduction of cooling demands refrigeration transaction to non ods and low uh, gwp based and enhancing energy efficiency and better technology options with the year 20 year time horizon i uh, i would like to take this opportunity to highlight this ministry proactive action towards the implementation of recommendation of icaps this ministry has recently developed and launched an action plan for implementation implementing the recommendation of indian cooling action for thematic area on space cooling in building being the most important and uh, which can significantly contribute to achieving the set goals of the icap various government department agencies have been identified to implement the action point with respect to wider adoption of the energy conservation building code ecbc for action point with respect to uh, like commercial building like eco nivas samhita uh, ecbc that it are for residential building by mapping with the various infrastructure schemes of the government which include low income housing projects under pradhan mantri awas yojana commercial building including offices airport hospitals educational institutions railway metro stations industrial establishment and awareness campaign to sensitize both the construction community and user regarding efficient buildings promotion of use of not in kind technologies like dcs solar vaporization uh, vapor absorption chiller that is vam and tri generation and solar assisted system etc this action pl uh, plan is also available on the our website uh, of the ozon cell of the ministry i'm happy to share that several studies has been conducted by the ozon cell of the ministry for capacity building and awareness generation for various department and agencies which are based on need of the icap uh, some of them are uh, steady report on cold chain sector in india for promoting non ods and low wg p refrigerant this steady reports provide information on various schemes of the government related to cold chain and available technology with respect to non ods and low uh, gwp based refrigerants and available latest standards for various components of the cold chain sector second is the, we have a study on the public procurement policy for refrigeration and air conditioning equipment using non ods based refrigerants the report highlights the data analysis performed in the study based on center and state level procurement of the refrigeration and air conditioning product including air conditioning air conditioners and refrigeration through gem portal for last 3 years from 2018 19 1920 2021 20, the report also emphasizing the saving in terms of energy consumption and eventually the cost of saving with the adoption of energy efficient refrigeration and air conditioning equipments in non ods based refrigerants and third uh, one is uh, we have developed a book uh, booklet on good servicing practices for energy efficient uh, operations of room air conditioner good servicing practices optimizes energy consumption by maintaining the energy efficiency 
of the equipment as designed and thus minimized this is the indirect greenhouse gas emission from RAC associated with the power consumption. The fourth one uh, is the, about the, uh, the publication uh, of the uh, ozone cell from the Ministry of Environment, Forest, and Climate Change. We have also come, also undertaken a study in association with Alliance for Energy Efficiency at Tripoli on adoption of passive pooling strategy in the upcoming affordable housing segment, aligning closely with the recommendation of ICAP. The objective of the study is to take an integrated approach to list out energy efficient and environment friendly pooling system available in the building sector. Ozone cell in the Ministry of Environment, Forest and Climate Change is planning to undertake other several such studies towards achieving the goal of ICAP. I would like to conclude uh, uh, that the goals of ICAP, such as reduction of pooling demand across the sector by 20 to 25 by year 2037-38, reduction of re uh, refrigeration demand by 25 to 30 percent by year 2037-38, and reduction of pooling energy requirement by 25 to 40 percent by year 2037-38 can be achieved through a robust policy and implementation of related action by mapping of the government schemes. Ozone Cell has been working on other thematic groups under the ICAP to come, up, come out with actionable point after mapping with various schemes of the government, department and agency in order to operationalize the recommendation of ICAP. We welcome the inputs and any fruitful suggestion from the delegates for further strengthening the implementation of ICAP. Thank you, thank you so much. Uh, thank you, sir, for those profound insights. I think um, the India Cooling Action Plan is a stellar reflection of India's leadership and strong political will to develop a comprehensive action plan. And ICAP makes India the first country in the world to launch a national cooling action plan. So I think on behalf of all the members that are present here, I thank you for spearheading the efforts on ICAP implementation. And with that, I'll now move on to the updates by <clears throat> ICC members. And maybe we can do this in alphabetical order of the organization name. So uh, I'll just kindly request all members to please uh, present your remarks in a maximum of four to five minutes so that we have adequate time for the moderated discussion towards the end of the session. So firstly, uh, starting with Alliance for an Energy Efficient Economy, I'll call Dr. Satish Kumar, Executive Director AEEE, uh, to talk about AEEE's initiatives linked with uh, sustainable cooling. Um, I'll just present my screen, Satish. Uh, thanks, uh, uh, Simrat. Am I audible? Yes. Okay, so I um, uh, want to express my sincere thanks and gratitude to uh, uh, Mr. Takpa for his uh, overview of the ICAP and um, uh, what has uh, uh, the ministry been doing uh, by working with uh, a large uh, number of stakeholders. And that is indeed the idea for uh, India Cooling uh, uh, Coalition, as Simrat mentioned. So I'll uh, quickly jump into the update from uh, AEEE perspective in terms of um, uh, what um, uh, we are doing. So just to give a quick uh, snapshot of all the uh, members of India Cooling Coalition. So they are represented here. As Simrat mentioned, uh, there are 20 uh, uh, non-profit uh, organizations, research organizations, industry associations who are part of this. And, um, and that is, um, I think he, this represents a pretty dynamic and a strong uh, community of people who are doing this um, research in the cooling and refrigeration uh, space. So next slide. <clears throat> so focusing a little bit on some of the work that uh, AEEE has been doing in the past, um, uh, so, as um, uh, sir, you also mentioned that um, one of our focus area has been 
um, uh, to enable like thermal comfort for a billion lives. Um, so this is uh, an area where India is uh, extremely uh, vulnerable uh, in our opinion because of the uh, tropical climate, a uh, low level of uh, uh, cooling appliance penetration and, uh, and the rising uh, temperature uh, uh, of the planet. So this makes, uh, I think, yes, uh, uh, quite susceptible and therefore um, uh, we are focusing not just on appliance focused uh, uh, thermal comfort, but also passive cooling design. So that's the first part. There are several initiatives, including the one in which we have collaborated with Ministry of Environment also. Um, then uh, we are also working on some of the technologies. So whether that uh, concerns uh, uh, not in kind technologies like uh, uh, air coolers. So there is uh, an effort to help develop a standard for evaporative air coolers. This work is happening in consultation with uh, uh, with ISHRE. Um, so thank you, ISHRE, for uh, uh, giving us an opportunity. And we are also hoping that this will get picked up uh, by um, Bureau of Energy Efficiency uh, as they uh, launch the standards for air coolers. There is also work happening in the fan sector as well as in the room air conditioner. Uh, but um, I think this is um, the cooling, uh, the cooler one, is sort of like um, uh, where uh, we are focusing a lot uh, right now. Uh, then similarly, there is a district cooling initiative. This is under a bilateral program with GIZ and under um, uh, Bureau of Energy Efficiency um, and uh, Ministry of Environment, Forest and Climate Change and uh, directly addressing um, one of the technologies listed under India Cooling Action Plan. Uh, I think he, uh, from a technology perspective, uh, challenges may not be I think it's that different uh, than the central plants. I think a lot of central plants that get built, but the challenge also is the geographical coverage as well as the business models and uh, um, the multi-stakeholder mechanism that is needed to actually pull off this thing. So, so there is um, uh, that work that is also going on. Uh, building on the India Cooling Action Plan, ACCC also worked with uh, Cool Coalition and KSEP and. Uh, and UNSCAP, along with a host of other organizations to develop National Cooling Action Plan methodology. This uh, is available on the Cool Coalition website. And um, uh, countries like Cambodia and Indonesia are, uh, are trying this out uh, uh, as we speak. So different countries are developing their National Cooling Action Plan based on the methodology that has been developed. Um, we have also worked uh, extensively in the uh, cold chain areas um, um, some of the work that we have done has been to promote energy efficiency in cold storages, as well as um, uh, both the design guidelines and the, as well as the operation and maintenance guidelines uh, for uh, pack houses. So this is another um, uh, significant area where we are trying to positively enhance farmers' income uh, by working with the Ministry of Agriculture and some other uh, associated ministry. <laughs> And behavioral energy efficiency is another one uh, which uh, uh, we have worked upon because we believe that apart from policies and technologies, uh, human behavior is going to play an important role, at least as far as cooling is concerned. Uh, and especially, I think, in the way people are going to be uh, setting the te uh, set point temperatures in their homes and how that they are going to respond to maybe uh, demand response calls and some of those things. So next slide. These are just uh, um, a very uh, high-level overview of some of the publications that has come out, some of the things that I just mentioned uh, uh, in the previous slide. So I'm not going to uh, uh, speak individually on this. Uh, just uh, again, I think he, on uh, uh, passive cooling, on cold chain, on behavioral energy efficiency, on some of the appliances related work. And uh, all these publications are available for download from AEEE website. Uh, next slide. Okay, that's it. Um, uh, so the last thing is that um, uh, while a lot of focus has been on the policy uh, side, uh, in the feed conference, uh, we are also uh, creating a platform to engage with the private sector. And that is uh, uh, one area where uh, we are trying to make some fresh inroads. So you will see that organizations like Rama and Rata and International Copper Alliance, Ishre, I think they are participating in three or four sessions that is focused on cooling as part of the feed that is going to happen over the next uh, couple of days. Um, so with that, I'm going to hand it back to you, uh, Simrat, for uh, 
uh, uh, for continuing with the program. Thank you. Um, thank you, Dr. Siddish. Um, <clears throat> next, I'll invite Dr. Sanskriti Menon from uh, CE. Hello, uh, uh, Simrat, am I audible? Yes. Yes, you are. Yes, thank you. Uh, so thanks. It was uh, really nice to hear the opening remarks of uh, Mr. Jigmet and also Satish, your uh, overview of the cooling, uh, cooling coalition. And uh, I'm sure there's uh, a lot I can see there is to learn from the ministry's work as well as, uh, you know, the partners in the cooling coalition. And we really look forward to uh, uh, just the sharing uh, in these two days as well as in the roundtable. Uh, just a quick overview of uh, you know some of the recent work that CE has been doing in uh, looking at we are really looking at a, a much more bottom up kind of uh, uh, context uh, understanding of the rural uh, cooling needs and uh, this we've been doing over the last two three years from uh, prior to the pandemic times to uh, through the pandemic times and uh, an early um, you know st uh, study uh, that we tried to do uh, in 2019 and 20 was really to look at how we can study the cooling needs in the rural uh, sector in different different uh, dimensions not only in agriculture but also in uh, uh, space cooling and uh, vaccine uh, cold chain animal vaccine cold chain etc this we did with uh, uh, you know partners Yuva Mitra and Bayef and also with the guidance from Professor Toby Peters and uh, with NPN systems and uh, so uh, there is a publication which has uh, come out of this uh, work um, the idea was to really look at uh, uh, the the cooling needs in, uh, for example, in the Anganwadis, in the retail uh, uh, food sector, as well as, of course, in agriculture, in growing and processing and uh, uh, transportation, as well as passenger transportation. Um, and uh, also then uh, looking at uh, uh, health care, both animal health care and uh, human health care. And uh, uh, then also the idea of emergency supply. So uh, what we found was that, uh, you know, of course, well, some of these sectors are uh, more evolved than others. And uh, we would really require some more uh, uh, studies, some more discussion uh, to work out how uh, we can benefit from both um, uh, enhance, you know, use, using cooling as a service to enhance well-being, whether it is uh, reducing food losses or reducing, uh, uh, you know, vaccine going bad. Uh, and also enhancing uh, uh, the ability to, uh, you know, passive cooling in as, as we expect that uh, extreme temperatures go up. So uh, this was really trying to understand the methodology itself for uh, uh, rural cooling needs. And uh, building on that uh, insights that we got, uh, we uh, are now looking at uh, uh, the screen and socially sound recovery in the farm sector. And uh, we would uh, really look forward to uh, looking at the reports and the uh, standards now being set for uh, 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 better cooling opportunities in the cold chain. And uh, uh, for now, what we are doing is looking at uh, how are farmers, farmer producer companies uh, and different uh, 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 farm initiatives as a rural uh, industry initiatives, what are the cooling needs uh, going in a little more depth and looking at uh, the uh, value chain and looking at the, uh, you know, the uh, energy requirements at different uh, stages and then as a subset also then the cooling uh, requirements at different stages and then see the potential for uh, uh, where cooling or uh, better energy options can uh, you know enhance uh, incomes to farmers and other uh, well-being uh, options while uh, keeping the energy demands and cooling demands low uh, so these are the three uh, clusters, the three uh, states that we are working in, and these are the different types of commodities. We have some uh, mainstream uh, kind of uh, uh, crops and commodities and some which are not that mainstream in a sense that they may be also forest produce. And so this will give us a good idea or at least some idea of how uh, you know, uh, from um, uh, harvesting uh, kind of uh, uh, systems to uh, actually production kind of systems and uh, the processing thereafter, how that goes on and the needs there. 
And uh, so, yeah, there are uh, several learnings already. We haven't, uh, we are still in the study stage and uh, next we are hoping to, uh, you know, look at uh, the potential for energy and uh, processing equipment, etc. Cold storage also and see how uh, we can take it forward for uh, enhanced incomes and uh, uh, reducing the uh, energy requirements. So that's where we are at and uh, looking forward to further sharing and uh, discussions with everybody. Now, have I stopped sharing? Yes, yes. Thank you so much, Dr. Sanskriti. Um, next time inviting uh, Shikha Basin from CW. Great, thank you. Uh, good morning to everybody. Is my screen visible? Yes. Great. So first of all, uh, many, many thanks to uh, Shri Takwaji for being with us this morning and uh, for AEEE, Shakti and all of the partners for uh, bringing us together. I hope everyone's having a good start to this year despite COVID concerns. Um, for those of you who don't know me, I'm Shikha Bhilsin. I'm a senior program lead at the Council on Energy, Environment and Water. I take care of our cooling and climate negotiations program. Uh, CEW operates across uh, seven different focus areas um, dedicated to developing and unearthing primary data, applying integrated analysis, uh, and finally extensively using strategic outreach to understand, explain, and change uh, the use and the misuse of resources. Um, I'm in the technology finance and trade team, which is where HFCs and the Sustainable Cooling Program is housed. Um, and since its inception um, back a, like 10 years ago, CW has been one of the initial uh, movers in the civil society space to really look at HFCs and what that means for our own development trajectory. Um, you know, and as a quick um, sort of report card of what all has happened in the last 10 years and what all we have been privileged to be a part of with many of you uh, on this call today, uh, but most definitely under the ages of the ozone cell has been uh, reaching the Kigali Amendment, uh, you know, the rollout of the R&D collaborative program dedicated to refrigerants from the MOEFCC, the India Cooling Action Plan, of course, um, the development of the reskilling program with ESSCI that MOEFCC launched, uh, the rollout of the PIL scheme. Hopefully we'll be hearing much more about that in the budget in another hour today. Um, as well as enhancing the long-term efficiency of air conditioners. And this is something that we're working with the Bureau of Indian Standards with. Um, now, while this is happening at a policy impact level, um, in terms of the research that we've built upon, which has led to several of these policy impacts, has, of course, been the setting up and the shaping of regulatory frameworks, which has not only looked at, uh, you know, the hydrofluorocarbon emissions, what that means for India's... Um, climate actions, but also what that means for India's development by way of accessing sustainable cooling. Uh, and these are some of the, uh, the bits that we've worked on and will continue to work on. So um, we have done an extensive analysis on what kind of policy frameworks industry is looking for when it comes to phasing down HFCs, which is actually surprisingly different from uh, what was adopted as part of the HPMP programs uh, previously. Uh, we are now embarking on a project where we are going to be looking at managing the end of life and the recycling of refrigerants so that the entire stock base that is left is not sort of blown up into the atmosphere and is not, uh, um, you know, causing havoc in the baselines that India is going to start recording in a couple of years. Uh, we're also going to be doing a bottom-up uh, cooling needs assessment across India and uh, Sanskriti, this is going to be different from uh, what you all are doing because it's going to be focused on heat stress at a district level in India and what that means in terms of appliance ownership. Uh, and of course, uh, as needed, we're going to continue with the emissions uh, profiling for the country. A second pillar um, that is been a strategic area of our work has been the servicing sector. So we're looking and we have looked at, uh, you know, the rollout of formalization of the uh, servicing sector, what that means in terms of developing a certification system, what that means in terms of streamlining good servicing practices by way of curricula and trainings, as well as incorporating a largely informal servicing sector, uh, you know, towards a registry and eventually formalizing them. 
Uh, a second pillar of that is the enhancement of job security and livelihood opportunities for the servicing technician. And in line with this, we're rolling out of a large scale technician perception survey to really understand what the technicians uh, you know, think of this entire formalization and the various goals uh, that the India Cooling Action Plan has captured, uh, as well as understanding the technology needs uh, in terms of tools and tackles that are required for them to implement good servicing practices. We're also studying the increases in the numbers as well as the changes in the types of jobs that would get captured in the servicing sector because as you're all aware, uh, you know, the refrigerant transition, the increased uh, enhancement in energy efficiency, as well as the Internet of Things are three simultaneous technology transitions that are coming at the servicing sector and we want to make sure that there is readiness there. And then finally, we're looking at consumer awareness as well as behavior change to uh, encourage the uptake of higher efficiency uh, practices, but also to ensure that good servicing practices are uh, demanded um, by way of the technician. Um, and then a quick snapshot of what we're doing in the space of R&D and industrial growth. Um, in a couple of months, you will be all getting an invite um, for a study that we're putting out, for a series of studies that we're putting out um, that are mapping India's R&D initiatives across the public-private divide, um, but also highlighting along the supply chain where India can really develop its own competitiveness again, right? So you've got the PIL scheme. Uh, we know that these transitions are underway. There is a need to make in India. But where should we really be in, uh, investing so that our manufacturing and our competitive uh, gains can be met and we can become a part of the global value chain? Uh, we will continue to do our work on collaborative uh, R&D institutional mechanism, not, mechanisms, not just uh, for the national level programmatic rollouts, but also private, private sector collaboration rollouts, uh, as well as showcasing what else needs to happen uh, in terms of identifying technologies and how government and other international uh, financing mechanisms can support it. Um, and we're also coming out with a series of technology issue briefs looking at all of the technologies, uh, but at different stages of maturity uh, you know, for sustainable cooling. So some sets of technologies that are ready for scale up in India, some sets of technologies that don't exist in India, but do outside and would be well suited. And then finally, um, you know, looking at technologies that would fall under the space of the Montreal Protocol, but are still quite over the horizon, which basically includes climate geoengineering, and how each of these sets of technologies can be um, enhanced or better governed uh, and what that means uh, you know to make available sustainable cooling uh, for India um, in the short term. Uh, I will end over here. Um, if there's any questions I'd be happy to take them. And with that I will hand it back over to Sibrat. Thank you. Hey, thank you Shikha. Uh, next, I am inviting Vikram Murthy from Ishray, as I know he has another commitment in an hour. So maybe you can go next, Vikram Murthy. Yes, Simran, I will. So you're going to show my screen or should I? Uh, I can put it on screen. Okay, do that. Yeah, I hope it's visible. Yeah, it is. OK, so my name is Vikram Murthy. I'm going to speak on behalf of Ishray on impacting ICAP's space cooling thematic group. Uh, we work on many other thematic groups as well, but I'm going to focus today on this. Next slide. So you can see this picture. So active air conditioning, which is air conditioning with uh, compressor driven uh, a machine is not the only means to provide adequate cooling thermal comfort. Uh, as an intelligent species, we must develop and apply conscious, responsible behavior to drastically reduce the use of building energy. And Joint Secretary uh, Jigmet spoke about reduction of cooling demand. So you see this wonderful map of India, and below that you see the horrible map of what our, uh, what our, all our cities look like, you know, the proliferation of badly installed air conditioners, which might be good in terms of energy performance, but with 
perform very badly because of the way they are fitted and because of the energy they spew out and also because of the fossil fuel diesel generators driving them. But we are blessed with such a wonderful geography of India, which is a coastal uh, extent of 7,000 kilo, uh, kilometers. And so we have warm climate, we have hot and humid climate, we have dry climate. All of these are climate can be used to help us to do air conditioning. And so that's what's very important for us to understand. So let's go to the next slide. So the next slide shows us uh, a project which is underway now. Uh, this is the Central Vista project. So just look at these, uh, the, the way the whole project is handled to reduce the cooling demand. We are using trees to cause evaporation. We are using water-soaked hedges to form microclimates. We are using windows which are recessed and so that the heat doesn't come in. We are using sky breakers. Now this, is a, this is a building which is yet to come up. Uh, and this orientation also allows it not to get heat in. But we already have buildings like this all over India. In Delhi, you have the India Habitat Center with uh, Joseph Allen Stein designed many, many years ago, maybe 30, 40 years ago. And it's so gentle on the environment. This energy is less. It doesn't allow heat to come in. So that's the problem with all our buildings. We allow the heat to come in, we trap it, and then we're using air conditioners to remove that heat. And just about 20% is used to cool people. So let's go to the next slide uh, so that I... Uh, focus on what we really want to talk about. So impacting ICAP space cooling thematic group, ISHRE has many technical groups which are working on a large number of uh, areas which can really help to improve, uh, uh, to reduce the impact of, uh, of cooling as well as to use not in kind methods to do cooling because the good methods and the established methods are all being focused upon by manufacturers, by BE and everybody else. But we must talk about thermal comfort, understand it well. And we are cooling down to such low temperatures. It is quite OK not to have air conditioning when the temperature outside in Bombay is below, is above 30, and in Delhi is above 35. There's no need of air conditioning. You can use fans, and you can use all sorts of other methods. You can use evaporative cooling. Satish spoke about it. We have designed a tool now to help you to design evaporative cooling for wherever you are. We are very much into district cooling in a very different way, which I will not speak about now, where uh, people in less privileged homes can get the benefit of district cooling. We are very, very focused on radiant cooling because this is the, really the way to suck out heat from a building very easily. We are, we are doing a lot for ventilation. And one of the big things we are doing is about a new weather data project, which will be out very soon. We already have 60 cities. You are going to have close to 200 cities of India and another 100 for all the South Asian countries around us. So there you will see, uh, which you can already see in the existing one, that heat is outside only for very few hours in the 9,000 hours of the year. And if you, if you understand that, you will understand how to do cooling in a very different way. And that's the way we should go. And uh, we have to work hard as building service engineers along with architects who designed buildings which don't let the heat come in. And I think even engineers can do that. There are many ways of doing it, sucking out heat from a building, insulation, and, and tremendous other ways. Ishra is also working on a, a new building energy performance standard. 100 people are working on that. So I think I will end over here. Let's go to the next slide. It's probably the last one. And I'll be happy to interact uh, when we talk later. Thank you very much. Yes, thank you, uh, Vikram. Um, next, I'll invite uh, representatives from class. We have PK Mukherjee, I think, and Kishore Kumar joining us from class. Uh, Kishore, you're speaking on mute, actually. Oh, sorry. Yeah, thanks. Thanks for giving this opportunity for us, and uh, wonderful morning to everyone. This is Kishore. Uh, Basically, I work as a manager here in class. Uh, I've been working closely with the uh, government of India to support all the plant energy efficiency. Uh, Simra, do, do you have a slide deck to share? Yes. Uh, please. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, thanks. Thanks for that. So, uh, you know, class been working in India on the cooling and refrigeration segment for like a more than a decade, I would say. And, uh, you know, we have a very long relation working with the uh, government of India, especially the Bureau of Energy Efficiency, who develops national policies for appliances. And uh, we've been uh, in a flat barrier to support on the policies on uh, cooling and refrigeration technology, especially on the room air conditioners, the refrigerators. And the last couple of years, we also shift our focus towards the commercial refrigeration and the cooling as well. 
So uh, all of our work details are, are covered very well in the slide. So I'll try to quickly run through that slide deck. Uh, uh, can you just move to the next slide, please? Yeah. So basically, CLASP is an international NGO, and we've been working closely with uh, Bureau of Energy Efficiency, you can say, as a technical support. And it's been a, a decade for us that uh, we are working on this front. And uh, not only on the cooling and the refrigeration side, we are actually also working on the domestic sector, in, uh, industrial sector, even agriculture sector, which which where the appliances have been used. And we, we play a very strong role uh, to promote the energy efficiency of the appliances in India. And not only at the BE and even at the BIS, the Bureau of Indian Standard, uh, actually our, our uh, employee, Mr. Mukherjee, sir, is like a, a convener and a member of so many technical committee meetings of the BIS, uh, where he developed the national standards for the appliances as well. So all those standards are actually used for to develop the uh, energy performance uh, for the uh, you know appliances at the BE side. So uh, on the ICAP side, uh, you know, in the last two years, we actually uh, supporting all the short term and the medium term recommendations which are provided in the ICAP. And uh, with that uh, support, actually, uh, even the BE has launched a couple of uh, voluntary policies for the uh, cooling and refrigeration products as well. So, uh, Simran, can you just move to the next slide, please? Yeah. So, in this year, actually, we are working on eight appliances which are used in the space cooling and the commercial refrigeration. And uh, talking about the voluntary appliances, uh, you know, there are five of them. Uh, if you see in the slide deck, the busy cooler, display cabinets, water coolers, they are mostly used in the commercial refrigeration. We are focusing on the policies for that. And uh, for the space cooling side, we are focusing on the table fans and the pedestrian fans. And uh, we are anticipating that uh, by end of this year, this policy is going to be out by the Bureau of Energy Efficiency. And uh, when these are announced, if you see the impact of the policies, uh, it will be like close to 53 million tons of CO2 would be reduced by 2030. So this is our, our plans for the voluntary appliances. Uh, can you just move to the next slide, please? Yeah. And on the voluntary side, uh, you know, as we told earlier uh, that, uh, you know, when the short term and the medium term recommendations were adopted of ICAP, so deep freezers and chillers and the light commercial air conditioner were launched in 2019, uh, which class supported. Of course, that was in the voluntary phase. Now we are supporting BE to make the mandatory. And uh, and I'm very happy to say that uh, the deep freezer is formally adopted uh, for the mandatory policy and for the chillers and the light commercial air conditioner, it will be adopted in the mandatory by, uh, you know, from next year onwards from 2023. So uh, that policy announcement, among, sorry, announcement going to come out soon in a other couple of months. And we are anticipating that these policies would save close to 11.2 million tons of CO2 by 2030. And other interesting thing that we want to highlight here is that uh, uh, apart from the Government of India commitment, uh, we also uh, you know, report these uh, achievements to the NDC uh, targets as well. And we are very happy to support uh, uh, BE on this front. And, and moving on, uh, just next slide, please. Yeah. So uh, in the last 10 years, our focus was majorly on the domestic, uh, you know, industrial and commercial side. But from this year onwards, we are trying to focus on the cold chain sector, especially on the agriculture side, where, you know, uh, trying to support the uh, farmer's income to double it. And and uh, we are also trying to help uh, BE to develop the national energy efficiency policies for cold chain technologies. Uh, and uh, of course, they are mostly used in the cooling and the refrigeration segment. Uh, so when we say uh, we support the technologies in, uh, in the different sectors, we you know coal is a very big area, and we are yet to figure out are we going to work in the pack houses or coal storage or the ripening chambers, uh, because you know technologies are are huge or they are very bigger capacities. So we yet to identify them, and we in the next couple of months we're going to uh, finalize those technologies and uh, provide recommendations to be to develop our policies. And also, we are anticipating that these policies will actually result into a CO2 emission reduction of 8.5 million tons by 2030. So this has been our, our work plan, you can say, in year 2022. And uh, and also, we are planning to expand our work uh, to other areas as well in the refrigerants also. Our discussions are going on with the uh, Bureau of Energy Efficiency on that front. We'll keep you posted on further on that. So this is all from our side. Uh, if anyone have any queries, happy to uh, respond. And then I once again thank you for uh, AEEE and MFCC for giving us this opportunity. And 
and I'm also thankful for all the ICC members for sharing their work and and uh, trying to uh, work on the energy efficiency space to make our country better on that. So thanks, thanks for this opportunity. Once again, bye. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks. Um, next, I'll invite Dr. J. S. Nili from C. Step. Uh, good morning. I hope you can hear me, see me. Yes. Uh, good morning. I don't have a, a presentation really. All I wanted to uh, say is uh, thank you very much for taking the time out, sir. Uh, uh, I'm from the Center for Study of Science, Technology and Policy. And uh, we are working on, uh, I think where I would like to highlight is our work on the sustainable alternate futures for India. We are working on this particular model and we work with the MOEFCC on many of the net zero scenarios. And one of the things that we have been working on is in the issue of what is the cooling load and the energy requirements for buildings going forward. Now here, one of the things that we have been doing is also looking at what are the implications of alternate building materials on the energy load of our uh, uh, residential sector. Uh, this is where we are sort of trying to estimate uh, what are the changes that can come about? How can we actually reduce the cooling load through better and alternative cooling materials, given that the uh, residential sector is still to grow, a lot of buildings are still coming up. What are the ways in which our urbanization as well as the buildings that are coming up can uh, continue and uh, essentially reduce this particular load? We are finding that there is a huge uh, uh, benefit to considering alternate building materials. Uh, so this is the angle that we are particularly looking at. Uh, in fact, uh, we are hoping to work with many of the entities who are here in this uh, on this call. Uh, hopefully we will work with them and try to come up with uh, uh, policies and ideas on how to reduce and essentially achieve India's cooling action plan. So uh, that's all I would like to say right here. Thank you very much again for the opportunity and uh, very happy to listen to most of the other participants on this call. Uh, thanks a lot, Dr. Dayasundi. Uh, next, I'll invite uh, G. N. Gogul Deepak from Blazing Society of India. Thank you, Samra. Uh, request you to share the presentation or something, please. Yes, I'll just put it on screen. Respected dignitaries, uh, fellow ICC members, uh, very good morning to you all. I'm Goku Deepak uh, from Asian Society of India. Uh, quick introduction about this uh, side. Please move on to the next slide. Blazing Society of India is a technical body which is working on architectural glass profiles and blazing systems uh, for its performance in areas of energy efficiency and safety. And our main focus are based on the six pillars, we call it a six C. Uh, I will not take you through much on the uh, on each of the pillar, but I'll try to uh, bring you what all we have done so far in the last 12 years uh, based on the six C. Uh, when we talk about capacity building, we have uh, brought in uh, in association with our respective academic partners. So there are three state of the art world, world class research and testing facilities. Starting with our card uh, from Tech University, we have an SGRT facility in IIT Madras, and we have a AGRT facility in CSIR, CGCRI, So these three testing facilities are currently. Uh, working on testing glass and blazing systems for its performance in the areas of energy efficiency and safety. And we are also uh, involved in training uh, people in terms of testing, in terms of handling the equipment. We are also involved in customizing some of the equipment that are required to test glass and blazing systems for its energy efficiency, safety, and quality parameters, and which can also be custom made in India instead of importing it from the other country. Uh, in fact, uh, this also would encourage the Make in India program of the government of India currently. And moving on to the next certification part, we work very closely uh, with, the, with the respective governmental bodies like the and Bureau of Indian Standards to bring in the respective uh, BIS certification or the rating program or the certification for black and blazing systems that are used in the country. For its respective performance. 
and uh, we are also uh, working on a third party testing program which would enable the certification uh, program to be effective in the country and moving forward on the code uh, as said earlier uh, we have worked with the uh, bureau of energy efficiency very closely and uh, we have supported the in terms of bringing out the respective standards and codes for glass and glazing in their ecdc uh, that for commercial buildings and you can even some meter for the residential building and also for the building energy efficiency rating program from the and from bis we have successfully brought out 16 new standards for architectural glass and glazing system which include uh, use of glass in buildings uh, the code of practices Uh, which is IS 16231 Part 1 to Part 4, and we were also being very successful in bringing a new part or a new section in National Building Code, which talks about glass and glazing under the structural design chapter of National Building Code. And this is a very significant step uh, because uh, now glass is being considered as a building material in the country, and there is no building uh, which which has uh, not got a glass window or a glazing. system like a fazar uh, which has been coming up in the country and it is very easy if we can focus on the glass and glazing system in terms of reducing the uh, the carbon footprint in the country coming forward to the conformity side uh, we have uh, brought in uh, the the isi marking on uh, the floor glass and the safety glass with the help of dpiit and bureau of indian standards and moving forward we are also working on bringing the isi marking for the other products too Because being in a country like India, getting an ISI marking on any product is mandatory, and we are working to bring in ISI marking for every glass product that is being used in the building. And we are also helping uh, and supporting the respective governing body in terms of working out the conformity assessment uh, modules, which can assess the products that are being manufactured locally and are also imported into the country from the international manufacturers. and moving forward with respect to the compliance uh, again there again this is a very important part so when you have a basic uh, research and testing facility we have the codes and standards in place should focus more on how it has been implemented how it has been monitored for its compliance in the in the actual building so we are also working very closely with the the respective state body in terms of uh, you know uh, bringing out these codes and standards Uh, in each and every building with respect to glass and glazing, and the final one is on the award research and publication. So we are already working on many research initiatives. I will not go through it because there are plenty of research programs we have worked with our respective academic partners uh, in the last 12 years. And the very recent one I will take you to the uh, in the next slide. So please move forward. very quickly i'll take you through some of our initiatives that is focusing on the energy efficiency and uh, the india cooling action plan uh, one currently we are working on to bring out a new standard for coated glass uh, this is basically also termed as the energy efficient glass in india uh, this glass uh, when we talk about the indian scenario this will cut out the heat that is being uh, entering into the building and uh, and it reduces the uh, the heat uh, that in transmitting from the external environment to the internal environment plus it also increases the rate of heat loss and which which enables uh, the the active cooling system to work less instead of you know uh, working more to reduce the heat that is being entered into the building so we are also uh, working with carry uh, on two aspects one on establishing the need for and uh, getting the suitable energy efficient glass and glazing system for affordable houses and two is for development of evaluation and compliance mechanism of glass and glazing as per the energy conservation building code of bee and how to implement ecdc with respect to glass and glazing in the state the fourth initiative we are focusing on is bringing out and rating or labeling program for glass a precise and fazard and penetration in india So we have already uh, approached BE, and we are working very closely with them for the last one decade. We are trying to formulate and rating or labeling program for glass and glazing system. So we are hoping that in the coming uh, years we would be successful in bringing out this rating and labeling program for glass and glazing system. The other initiative we are currently uh, working on is uh, we have launched uh, 
R S Fellowship Award. So this is in memory of our founder chairman, Mr. R Subramanian, uh, who has uh, was being very instrumental in in uh, in building Society of India in bringing up this organization to work on the energy efficiency areas of flat and raising in the country. So in memory of uh, the founder chairman, we have instituted an award. It's called R S Fellowship Award. This would include uh, research in the areas of energy efficiency because this will capture the larger uh, piece of the entire uh, entire uh, program, uh, and this would be done by the uh, the academic institutions. So this is an award that to encourage more academic institutions, more number of academic students to focus on the research aspect of flash and blazes. So uh, this will be getting launched uh, in this in the uh, next academic year, which is 2022 and 2023. And by 2023, we will be able to present some of the research uh, papers that have been done by the respective academic students. Moving forward, uh, GSI always will uh, to continue outreach programs because we believe in uh, spreading the awareness and training the respective uh, construction value chain people. In terms of the energy efficiency aspect of glass and blazing system, and we feel that this has to continue for even more number of years because uh, it is it is not that easy to cover the entire construction value chain. Uh, this outreach program has to uh, keep on going, and GSI is uh, committed to do this uh, such programs at every point in time. And uh, currently, due to the COVID uh, situation, we are doing it in the form of webinars. But a lot of webinars have been organized for. The architects, for the engineers, and for the respective consultants who are working on the buildings in terms of energy efficiency uh, on building envelopes. And moving forward, uh, the next two programs are very key uh, initiatives which is being launched by GSI in this year. Uh, we are uh, we are uh, proposing a study on the reduction of carbon footprint by using energy efficient glass and glazing in India. This is a very important aspect. Because uh, any building in the country uh, will definitely use a glass or, or a glass window. It can be a smaller glass window, or it can be a medium size, or it can be a larger facade. But there is going to be glass windows used in building sites and residential building or a commercial building in the country because of our climatic conditions, like we have hot and dry and warm and humid climatic conditions. So glass windows are going to be part of every building that has been already made or It is business which are going to come up in the future. So it is very simple if we uh, demonstrate uh, by changing these glasses into an energy efficient glass, uh, we can we can substantially reduce a large amount of carbon footprint in the country, especially in the new buildings that are going to come up. So this particular study will focus on how much carbon footprint that we can reduce by using an energy efficient glass in the building. So this is going to be a very short term study. Uh, where we wanted the action to be uh, followed to uh, based on the study findings, because a uh, lot of buildings are going to come uh, every month. So there are a lot of buildings that are getting constructed every month, and the the earlier we finish the study and come out with the findings, the earlier we start implement the findings, it is going to help us in reducing the carbon footprint in a larger scale. And two, we will also be working on establishing the optimum and suitable energy efficient building envelope solution for Indian buildings. This, uh, keeping in mind, we are trying to work out a solution, uh, uh, including glass uh, windows or a glazing system like facade uh, in a building with the other building materials. We are going to find out which one is more suitable or more optimum, so that we get the highest possible result of energy savings in a building or. We get an uh, highest possible passive cooling in the building, so that the active cooling workload can be reduced uh, in a larger scale. The uh, last and and not the least, uh, as you all know, that uh, 2022 has been announced as the International Year of Glass by the United Nations, and Glazing Society of India is one of the active partners of India in bringing out this particular milestone in the world. And uh, as part of this particular initiative. In 2022, GSI will be focusing more on popularizing the energy efficient glass usage in buildings uh, because this is going to add lot of value in reducing the carbon footprint and also to 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 not only the energy efficiency part, this will also provide lot of thermal comfort and uh, connect to the residents of the building to the external environment, which 
is also directly connected to the wellness of the population. Uh, next slide, please. So with this, uh, I start presentation. Thank you, everybody. So being with our motor, Bill Singh, Bill Green, I thank once again uh, all the members who have participated. Thank you. Uh, thank you, sir. Um, uh, we are at 11 now, so I'll request all the remaining uh, speakers to please conclude in uh, three to four minutes so that we have sufficient time in the end for the moderated discussion. And uh, now I'll invite Prima Madan from NRDC. Thank you so much, Simrat. Uh, would you be able to share the slides, please? Yes. As Simrat is sharing screen, I'll probably just take a minute to introduce uh, myself. First of all, thank you so much to uh, AEEE and ICC for bringing us all together. It's really a pleasure to be here and talk about NRDC's initiatives on cooling and pleasure to meet with you, uh, sir, and hear your opening remarks, uh, remarks Mr. Takpa. Um, just to introduce myself, I am uh, Prima Madan and I lead the work on cooling and energy efficiency at National Resources Defense Council's India program. Uh, NRDC is an international environmental organization uh, started in the U.S. with over 50 years of experience uh, working across the environmental issues. And in India specifically, NRDC has been working since 2010, uh, focused on three interrelated work areas of clean air and healthy cities, clean energy access and finance and cooling and efficiency. Uh, working with our strategic partners, uh, many of whom are uh, on this on this call today, Terry, CEW, uh, ASCII, IIPHG, and as well as SEVA. A uh, bit more on our work on cooling and efficiency. Um, as I mentioned, uh, NRDC has been in India since past 12 years, and cooling through our work on buildings has been the focus ever since. And since 2015, uh, we have been working more specifically on refrigerant gases and issues related to the Montreal Protocol and Kigali Amendment, and more recently also focused on the ICAP implementation. Uh, phasing down hydrofluorocarbons and sustainable climate cooling is a global priority for NRDC. And in India, we are working on uh, cooling and energy efficiency uh, closely linked to the implementation of the ICAP through three interrelated strategies. Uh, working with our on-ground partners. Uh, first is on HFC phase down, and this is through our work at the Moderate Protocol. And here we focus on bringing in international expertise and information exchange to support uh, India's engagement at the Montreal, at the Protocol, uh, particularly through our deep engagement with the US and, China's, uh, and China on the issues related to uh, Moderate Protocol. Um, and we are also focused on Kigali Amendment implementation. Our second strategy is focused on efficient appliances, uh, keeping in mind that with the HFC face down, every cooling equipment in every factory in the world will have to be retooled and not addressing energy efficiency as this is done is just too big an opportunity to miss. We therefore work on outreach and analysis of stronger appliance efficiency standards, drawing on international updates, convening stakeholder consultations to look at joint solutions. Uh, with a particular focus on room air conditioner standards given the growth expected of this equipment, uh, which is also really the focus of the ICAP. And finally, our third strategy is focused on cooling demand reduction through efficient buildings and low cost uh, solutions such as uh, cool roofs. And I will talk a little bit more about each of these. Uh, next slide, please. Thanks, Simrad. Uh, focused on our first strategy, uh, we are ready to partner on a robust HFC phase down strategy for India, and we recently completed a scenario-based analysis of Kigali implementation in India. It basically evaluates alternate scenarios for India's HFC demand trajectory compared to the likely control obligations under the Kigali Amendment based on current and future markets for HFC, HFC using equipment, types of refrigerants now utilized and projected to be utilized. The work has been submitted to a peer review journal, and we'll be very happy to discuss the findings with ICC members and peers to really collaboratively contribute to India's national strategy development process on HFCs, which is to begin now. Uh, we're also exploring US India engagement on technology and finance for pooling to meet ICAP targets and also through the Multilateral Fund at the Montreal Protocol. 
Third, I also wanted to bring to focus to this group the opportunity to highlight schooling at the upcoming COP27 uh, more, spe more specifically. And for example, through a cooling day at COP in Egypt, there is opportunity to bring this to focus. And we've discussed this internally and I've spoken to some stakeholders. There is interest and we're working on putting a concept together and we'll be happy to partner with ICC members and MOFCC to jointly put this together. Uh, fourth, as I mentioned, we are closely also engaging with the Bureau of Energy Efficiency on strong, stronger AC standards and strengthening compliance. This is tapping on our work in the US and also in China on uh, uh, energy efficient equipment standards. Next slide, please. Uh, so as I mentioned, advancing building energy efficiency uh, through implementing building energy codes, again, a near-term opportunity that has been recommended in the ICAP has been the focus of NRDC's work since we started in India, uh, working with Administrative Staff College of India. We successfully implemented the ECBC in the states of Telangana and Andhra, and now we are working on high-impact states of Gujarat and Maharashtra, uh, moving the states to code implementation, uh, lastly tapping, tapping on the lessons from Telangana and AP. Uh, in Telangana and AP, we are also now moving uh, towards ECBC residential, the Eco Nevar Samita, giving, given that the states already have a very well functioning uh, mechanism for commercial building energy codes, which one can really tap on. Uh, finally, focused particularly on low income communities who we know are more vulnerable to extreme heat. We work on cool roof implementation in cities. Uh, right now, focused in Ahmedabad and Hyderabad, we started with cool roof demonstration in these two cities in, 2017, in 2000. 17 and now are working to expand implementation at the citywide level in both the cities through so strategies which are tailored by building types. Telangana, for example, is soon to release a cool roof policy, which we drafted along with ASCII and include cool roofs in the dignity housing uh, scheme. We're also working to uh, further expand these demonstrations to other cities, working with Mahila Housing Trust. And recently, we also installed uh, cool roofs in rural areas as well. And in 2021, uh, working with the National Disaster Management Authority, we released the heat wave season uh, cool roof challenge, largely inviting states and cities to announce cool roof targets. Uh, things, of course, got a bit derailed due to COVID wave uh, during the last uh, summer and it halted uh, implementation, but we are hoping to relaunch the challenge again this, this year. Uh, so a large part of our effort now uh, as part of cooling and efficiency is really to look at the scale of impact uh, and moving from demonstration to larger city state level uh, programs. Uh, so thank you so much. I'll conclude here. This is a bit about our work and we very much look forward to collaborate with ICC uh, members and also with the ministry to jointly work towards a common goal of ICAP implementation. Thank you. Back to you, Simran. Thank you. Um, next, I'll invite Aditya Chanaka from Prayas Energy Group. Good morning, everyone. Uh, am I audible? Yes, yes. Yes, hi. Uh, I know everyone has one eye on the budget speech, so I'll keep it very short. Uh, I don't want to compete uh, with that. Uh, so our, uh, I work with Prayas Energy Group. We are based in Pune, and we work on policy and uh, regulatory issues uh, in energy sector with a focus on electricity sector. And our focus on cooling is, uh, or our work on cooling is part of a broader work on uh, energy efficiency. Uh, and we broadly look at our work uh, in two themes. Uh, the first theme is uh, to uh, understand and model consumer behavior so that we can uh, use those insights to inform, uh, uh, inform policies that can be used to influence the behavior. Uh, so that theme, uh, uh, the understanding and modeling consumer behavior, we are doing um, it in three ways. First is to do surveys, uh, and we uh, have done surveys in different geographies, uh, uh, in different, uh, also focusing on specific end uses, such as air conditioning in different cities. The whole idea is that what are the different factors that affect consumers' behavior uh, related to buying of appliances, related to uh, use of those appliances and how uh, we will be able to change them. So that's the survey part. But again, we also find that in the surveys, the, uh, the responses that people give about their consumption pattern may not be the actual thing that they do. Uh, so what we also did was we chose a sample of 150 uh, households and then we put some smart meters in those households and we 
monitor the actual consumption of these households to find insights on what the actual consumption is. Uh, we have put all the data in public domain, and then we also try to find what is the correlation with temperature, uh, uh, how the consumption of ACs, fans, air coolers, that changes with uh, temperatures and other factors. The third thing that we do is we use this data from inside, from the surveys as well as our meters to uh, actually do a bottom-up modeling. Uh, uh, a bottom-up modeling of all the residential energy end uses, including uh, cooling, and uh, to find out how, sorry, yeah, uh, to find out what, uh, 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 how uh, the, the energy uh, will be changing uh, based on, uh, so this model is called peer, peer and uh, again, it's an open source uh, model where we use this uh, insights to project the energy consumption in the future. So that's the part about understanding and modeling uh, consumer behavior. The second part is, uh, of course, using these insights to inform the policy and uh, uh, the governance part of energy efficiency, where there is uh, a comparatively limited focus uh, in uh, India. And our work has focused on uh, uh, developing programs or giving inputs to programs which can uh, facilitate market transformation to energy efficient appliances, uh, be it super efficient equipment program or be it other uh, utility level uh, programs uh, uh, with the same aim. Uh, the second thing that we also, um, uh, we closely follow the standards and labeling program and also uh, kind of uh, you know, follow, uh, explore the governance issues in it. Uh, and also uh, you know, we are part of some of the technical committee meetings, uh, technical committees of BE uh, where these uh, standards are, uh, uh, are identified and revised. So we do uh, present our inputs there uh, and also so focusing on what are the processes, I mean, how frequently these standards are revised because standards and labeling is an important tool, be it IEA, be it ICAP, uh, uh, in India's energy efficiency strategy. So how frequently they are revised, uh, whether they are delayed, and what can be done in order to uh, keep uh, the schedule uh, intact. So those kind of things we do focus and highlight. The second thing that uh, we are also working on, uh, and again, uh, in on this governance issues is also the check testing uh, and what are the uh, so uh, in standards and labeling what are the different issues where you can uh, increase these check testing plan or these check testing process so that the compliance with the standards and labeling is uh, is improved because at the end of the day no matter how uh, how many times or how strictly you revise the standards uh, if the model in the market or if the model that consumer uses, if that does not comply with those standards, then you don't achieve those uh, savings. Uh, so that is something also that we are working on. And finally, we are also kind of looking at this broad strategy and money part of it. Because one thing that we have observed over our past uh, few years that we have been working is that uh, in energy efficiency, we do have a kind of a checkbox approach i mean you name any efficiency any energy efficiency policy and we have it in india but uh, we also do need to and at the same time we have limited resources i mean if you look at be's um, uh, budget it's almost just 200 crores out of 15000 crores of uh, um, mop's budget uh, hope it changes today a little bit but uh, uh, at the end of the day we have limited money uh, and then with that limited money, how better we can strategize uh, the different policy options that we have. So we are working a little bit uh, on that. Uh, and again, even there, uh, we will talk with the different members uh, uh, over here uh, to kind of figure out what that strategy would be and what those priorities would be. So that's our work uh, in a nutshell. Thank you for giving us this opportunity to present here. Thank you. Thanks, Aditya. Mm -hmm. uh, next, I'll invite Sumeda from WRI.
Uh, Sumeda, can you hear me? Uh, if you're speaking, you're on mute. Uh, just in the interest of time, I'll move to um, Shakti. Uh, sorry, Simrit, I'm there. Sorry. Great. Okay. Uh, can you project our presentation? Do you have it? Um, Actually, Swayda, I don't have the presentation from you today. Uh, OK, I had sent it to you just a while back, so maybe not been able to access it. Uh, but I think we can we can proceed without the presentation. And uh, firstly, uh, thank you for inviting us to this discussion. And uh, it's a pleasure listening to everyone around uh, the cooling initiatives that are being implemented uh, by different organizations. And uh, I think uh, congratulations to uh, Mr. Thak Thakpa on the initiatives that MOESCC is undertaking on promoting the India Cooling Action Plan. Um, I, uh, I am Sumedha. I lead the building efficiency work at WRI India, which is a research organization that works at the nexus of uh, environment and development. Uh, we also work very closely with cities and uh, most of our uh, interventions and efforts in the cooling area are in relation to the urban work that we've been doing on energy transitions. Um, I'll quickly summarize some of our ongoing initiatives, uh, splitting them into two parts. One is the scale of our initiatives. So we are working uh, at the state level uh, with the entry point being the energy transition. Um, so uh, we are focusing on the states of Tamil Nadu and Kerala looking at the role of cooling as a demand side sector uh, in the transition to clean energy and energy efficiency. Uh, we are also in that process trying to understand the gaps and challenges of implementing ICAP uh, at the subnational and the state level. And uh, building on these state level efforts, the, uh, the work that we are doing, particularly at the local level, at the city level, uh, is aligned around a couple of work streams. Uh, one is the focus uh, on city climate action plans. Um, there is a, there's a renewed interest in cities to work towards net zero uh, targets, and we have been working with several cities on uh, city climate action plans and introducing cooling related interventions, either in space cooling or other sectors, through the design of these uh, climate, city climate action plans. Uh, we are also working with a couple of cities in Tamil Nadu on what we are calling clean energy action plans. And uh, through that process, we have engaged with some of the ULBs and corporations and learned that there is inter interest in uh, passive cooling strategies. Um, and uh, mostly ULBs uh, and corporations are looking for support in how these can be streamlined and mainstreamed across their different buildings. Uh, we are currently engaged with the government of Kerala in promoting clean energy interventions, including sustainable cooling strategies through training and capacity building. And uh, some of our long standing work on the behavior side has been to work with residential communities uh, in Bangalore and Chennai to provide nudges to shift behavior towards energy efficient appliances. Um, and uh, we have also collected a lot of data in that process to understand what is the penetration of typical cooling appliances in these uh, in these cities and what kind of information and nudges can actually help people understand uh, understand the importance of efficiency and energy conservation, particularly on the cooling side. That's on the scale of efforts. Uh, as far as the sectors are concerned, uh, um, the focus remains on uh, two key areas, space cooling, which is uh, focused uh, primarily on existing buildings where we have been working with uh, the government of Kerala in benchmarking buildings. Uh, there is a new program initiative launched in Kerala called the Urjayan program under which we have been trying to understand uh, what types of buildings uh, can be benchmarked and the energy performance uh, can be benchmarked for, uh, you know, under that program. And through those uh, exercises, we can draw insights on cooling behavior, penetration of cooling appliances and equipment, uh, and also what kind of behaviors can inform better choices. We are also working on guidelines to promote sustainable cooling for existing and new buildings in the same state. Uh, the second sector focus for us is, is on the cold chain side. Uh, 
where we have been engaging with the seafood cluster, the dairy cluster and food processing units in Kerala to identify clean energy interventions for cold storage. Um, so it, this is a, a very small you know, subset of the work that we are currently doing as a part of the energy program at WRI. And uh, we, are, we, we are sort of you know, new entrants to the cooling space, given our efforts have been mostly on the building efficiency side. Uh, but I would like to just you know, take a minute to capture some of the learnings that we have understood and uh, assessed based on the experience of working with states and cities. Um, and we uh, we talk about you know both the challenges and the opportunities here. So the challenge really is that uh, ICAP continues to be a document that is understood at the national level, and there is of course a lot of you know uh, you know efforts being driven uh, from at the national level. But when we go down to the state level or even to the cities, there is very limited knowledge of ICAP and. Cooling, given that cooling is not a sector at the local scale, there is very low priority given to cooling as a sector. So that's one challenge that we have found. Uh, the second challenge is with respect to knowledge gaps and limited awareness of non-mechanical cooling technologies. And this is prevalent across different stakeholder groups, not just limited to cities, but also private sector stakeholders on how they can incorporate non-mechanical cooling uh, in their own uh, commercial uh, buildings as well. There is, of course, an over dependence of air conditioner for thermal comfort by consumers uh, because of the, uh, the, the whole sort of marketing around air conditioners, which is promoting the uh, over penetration of air conditioners. That is also one of the challenges that we have found. Um, in terms of opportunities, we feel that there are you know, quite a few things that can be uh, implemented by this coalition that is you know, currently uh, on this call. Uh, one is the integration of the ICAP measures into city climate action plans or local climate action plans um, and developing some kind of standardized intervention sets which are tailored to different climate conditions. Given that India is a big country, we have very different cooling needs. Uh, the perception around cooling and humidity is very different. We cannot think that something which is applicable in Delhi will be also applicable in Chennai. So we have to think about what kind of standardization can exist as far as intervention sets are concerned. We also need to work towards defining thermal comfort to ease its adoption and application in different housing guidelines, including for affordable housing guidelines. Uh, and finally, we feel that given that most of uh, the access to air conditioners uh, or mechanical cooling will remain relatively limited, especially when it uh, based on the income levels. We, we need to work a little bit more on promoting energy efficient ceiling fans and passive cooling technologies, and that's where financing mechanisms and incentives can play a big role. Um, so this is just a summary of you know what our perspectives are as far as implementation of ICAP is concerned, and uh, and we look forward to you know any feedback and any input from our side. Uh, on this. Great. Thanks, Sundar. Uh, thank you, Sumeda. And now we have the last uh, presentation for the day. So I'll invite Ritika Jain from Shakti Sustainable Energy Foundation. Hi, uh, thank you so much. I'll quickly share my presentation and uh, take you through some of the initiatives that are being taken by Shakti's uh, foundation here. It was nice to hear from everyone today, um, from all the members of the Cooling Coalition on uh, their current initiatives. And on the same line, some of the themes that we have been uh, actively supporting and working on are clean cold, chain infrastructure, thermal comfort in buildings, uh, some refrigerant trans uh, transition work and HFC, uh, HFC phase down. We're also working on energy efficient and uh, climate friendly cooling appliances and supporting some of the uh, studies that are happening by different partners. Uh, we're looking at innovative business models as well. This is quite an interesting area because uh, as we all talk about financing and uh, innovative ways in which people can push for more climate friendly cooling, that is another area of interest for us. And we're also looking at uh, how this uh, sector can provide more green jobs and uh, look at a more economic, uh, sustainably uh, uh, and green economic recovery in different areas across rural and urban um, areas. So uh, just uh, taking you through some of the ongoing projects that Shakti is supporting is uh, to, to begin with on 
and a refrigerant transition. Uh, there was uh, an adoption of some safety standards last year on natural refrigerants in India. And on the same line, we're trying to engage with a lot of uh, businesses that are working with these new low GWP and natural refrigerants and engaging with the Montreal Protocol on uh, promoting and like looking at how we can adopt more and more natural uh, refrigerants in the country. Um, followed by some of the work on green economic recovery in rural value chains. We're supporting clean cold chain development and identifying what are some of the industrialization opportunities in rural areas that are that can help green the current uh, value chains in the agri sector. Uh, we're also supporting this uh, cooling coalition here in trying to foster more knowledge exchange and uh, maybe push for collaborative research and also uh, work. We always seek for opportunities where we can work on the more sub national level and impl implement some of the ICAP goals. So maybe initiating some discussions on thermal comfort requirements and affordable housing projects, as well as supporting some of the state and city level action plans for cooling and energy efficiency. So yes, uh, keeping it brief, uh, just some of the work that Shakti is doing, uh, I wanted to present and would be happy to connect later. Thank you. Thanks a lot, Ritika, uh, Ritika. Uh, and thank you everyone for your presentations. Uh, very quickly, we'll now move on to the moderated discussion for today on collaboration and diverse role of ICC members. And I would now request Mr. Shubhashish Te, uh, Director Climate Policy Program at Shakti Sustainable Energy Foundation to take the chair and moderate the session. Over to you, Shubhashish. Thank you, Simrat. Uh, just uh, a quick time check. So how much time do we have uh, now? I think if it is uh, OK with everybody on the call, maybe we can take 10 minutes to uh, have this discussion. Sure. Thank you, Simrat. And it was uh, interesting to know uh, about the work which the coalition members are doing. And um, actually, this meeting is supposed to be uh, a knowledge sharing platform. So uh, great to hear about uh, the work uh, everyone is doing. Uh, on the interest of time, uh, I will uh, uh, keep my part of uh, this moderated session as minimum as possible. So uh, the first question I have in mind is that uh, we all know that uh, India has uh, ratified Kigali Amendment to the Montreal Protocol. Uh, the economy is also recovering after the third phase of COVID. Um, and we are in the third year of uh, launching the India Cooling Action Plan. Uh, the recent development which uh, are correlated is uh, India's commitment to uh, a 2017 net zero target and enhancement of our 2030 uh, targets also. So from that perspective, I just wanted to understand that uh, how cooling as a sector, uh, cooling and refrigeration as a sector can contribute to all these targets and maybe specifically on uh, India's uh, 1 billion ton uh, emission reduction target by 2030. And what role uh, I uh, Indian cooling coll collaboration, the collaboration uh, members uh, individually and also more importantly as a collaborative can play in driving those changes. So this is an open uh, forum discussion, so anyone can uh, take a shot. Good to see you. Um, maybe I'll uh, sort of add to it. I'm not sure if it's an answer really, but it is something that we've also been thinking about. Um, that given the pandemic, actually, the uptake of appliances has not been as aggressive as was expected, right? Which is going to cause um, some sort of a differential in the baseline numbers uh, that need to start getting recorded in two years' time. Industry is not expecting, and it's um, unfortunate that is uh, not with us on this call right now, but industry is not expecting the uptake to be back to normal uh, in the next three years necessarily, right? It won't recover from what the pandemic has caused, um, which actually puts us in a position of having to reassess what the baseline is going to come out to be and therefore what the peak is going to come out to be. Um, so I just kind of wanted to throw this in the mix as well that when because, you know, it has been hampered and we actually don't have data to understand um, what this means for our uh, Montreal Protocol commitments uh, to be met by 2029 at the first. 
any other thoughts uh, maybe uh, on the, how cooling plays a role in our 2070 targets i know it's uh, pretty long term but still uh, i know that a lot of us are doing uh, yeah. modeling work on um, similar yeah subjects. i do think actually that with especially because this sort of bottom up assessment is happening right and i know that along with uh, what i said uh, there were at least two other organizations who have also mentioned that they're looking at a bottom up assessment right of cooling needs i think once that has been established it would actually be a lot easier to then start thinking about um you know what it means to sort of cool a billion lives um you know keeping net neutrality in mind for 2070 because right now i don't think we have the assumptions to even be able to assess and i think we'll have to broaden the scope to also include then the energy efficient fans program that is getting mandated in june start looking much more systematically at including originally what was the power sector uh, subject area right into the cooling domain uh thank you um, uh, shikha uh, so any uh, i guess uh, there is someone yeah i am um, please uh, ashwini ji uh, you know i have been uh, listening to everyone with interest i find a lot of uh, good practices are coming up the problem seems to be that these practices are not shared across india and they are not going to the local level where it has to be implemented possibly there is a greater scope for creating awareness and creating uh, compliance needs it has to be maybe the ministry has to do such an effort in saying guidelines to be implemented and send it to the district level like cool roof somebody mentioned it's being done wonderfully in some area i think the wri representative rightly pointed out that this seems to be a major challenge in promoting the good practices across india thank you uh thank you ashwini ji uh now uh, moving forward and taking the the cue from where ashwini ji has left uh, now uh, the in india cooling action plan implementation would require uh, involvement of the state and city level authorities and uh, the currently uh, i believe there is a lot of uh, that's my personal belief uh, that there is a lot of um avenues of capacity development required in both the policy making system within states and definitely within the cities so i'd like to understand more uh, from your perspective and how um, the coalition members can contribute in uh, rolling out uh, icap at a sub national level and i know sumeda had uh, mentioned about that and i would like to ask uh, this question first to sumeda and then open it up for everybody else to uh, contribute i'm not sure whether sumeda is there so uh, in the interest of time uh, yeah if, see hello yeah hi this is dilan subramanian uh, i'm from wri in tate itself so sure. sumeda is my colleague so uh, sure. so uh, you uh, you have raised a very valid point uh, so we believe that see uh, if we want if we are we are all talking about the developing strategies to implement uh, icap uh, in the nation and i believe that the strategies have strategies have to be developed based on the learnings that we have from sub national and state level efforts so we have to make sure that how we we at least need to see how 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 much we can implement how much of icap are implemented implementable at different level and for that uh, actually we have already mentioned that uh, in one of our slides saying that we are we are doing some sort of capacity building uh, with the uh, local self government institution city urban local body leaders to make sure that they know about the issue they know about the prospects of cooling they know about what sustainable cooling is all about they know what clean energy interventions can do and all those things we are trying to link it and we are trying to make sure that uh, we are providing that sort of a learning to uh, local self governments to understand the problem first and then solutions so we need to know what what, what needs to be changed uh, in in the icap and what needs to be adapted in the icap to make sure that we are uh, we are we are on the, we are on the same page to uh, implement these strategies at sub national level 
so we have already mentioned that there is a there is an avenue at local action plan for climate change so 10 cities in uh, kerala uh, have developed local action plan for climate change and we can see how we can incorporate the strategies in icap in those local action plan for climate change that's one avenue one of the avenues so there are similar avenues similar efforts parallelly happening at urban local bodies we have to identify those and we have to see the linkages Thank you, uh, Dilon. Uh, uh, I guess uh, Gohul has some point to make. Uh, yes, uh, Subhashin. Uh, in fact, I have uh, listened to all our uh, fellow ICC members, and what I felt was there are a lot of excellent initiatives that are already happening in the country uh, by our uh, fellow members in different areas. And I also see a lot of duplication that is also happening because uh, when we are talking about local bodies or, or in, uh, the state authorities or municipalities, I'm sure most of our members are approaching them with different solutions, different models uh, based on the objectives that they are handling uh, with their respective organizations. So I, I think that it's very important that we should first streamline as, as a group of ICC here, uh, align our objectives everyone has the same objective in mind which is which is bringing out an efficient either by active cooling or passive cooling to uh, to to implement it at the state level so uh, so that it is, it is implemented across the country uh, and if there is a possibility where uh, at one particular point where two or three members can join together an approach instead of all the three members approach the state bodies individually which will also lead to confusion at uh, the state level or at the local body level. If we can join together and, and form a common uh, program or a common solution that can be given to the state body or the local body, it will be more beneficial to them. So otherwise, what happens is like 10 different members. See, we are, we are uh, let me say, we are say uh, uh, 24 members here or 25 members here. So all 25 will be trying to give some 25 solutions to the local body authority. Instead, if we go to them with one solution which comprises of all this 24 into one document or into one solution, that would be picked up faster by these local bodies or state authorities. So this is, this is my submission and open to all uh, views from the ICC members. Thank you, Gohul. A very valid point. So uh, I don't see any further uh, uh, hand uh, or virtual hands. So uh, just moving on uh, now, uh, when we talk about implementation and also implementation at a subnational level, I remember when uh, the ICAP was in the uh, phase of development, uh, we had taken a uh, triple sector approach where the public sector, private sector, as well as the civil society slash research community came together in developing the uh, India Cooling Action Plan. Now, while uh, implementing the uh, ICAP, and I know that uh, things had been delayed and the progress might not have happened in the way we had thought of at that point of time, and a lot of that goes to the COVID-related restrictions and uh, challenges and uh, so and so forth. But how to bring that uh, triple sector approach uh, again back on the platform so that uh, uh, the private sector can be mobilized along with uh, uh, civil society and government in implementation of ICAP uh, goals. So any thought on that uh, from any of uh, the members and uh, the members, uh, I would re actually nudge those members who have not really spoken out so far. Maybe Rajan Bhai, uh, because he had uh, pioneered the work on um, uh, the cooling price and where um, he worked very closely with uh, the private sector also. So maybe his thoughts. Oh, my God, it took me on a spot. <laughs> uh, no, Subhashish, I think uh, it's uh, what I feel is that now it's time that we need to distinguish between two things that is cooling and comfort uh, although the title is a cooling action plan or whatever 
uh, we need cooling in certain areas, uh, as we have seen where Sanskriti and uh, other people are working. But when it comes to building, I think we're still talking about cooling. And I think we need to talk about the comfort. Uh, we are not doing a space cooling here. We are try trying to provide comfort. And I think that's where the many things goes uh, off the track. But coming back to your question about how do we really manage these three, uh, industry still needs to um, accept uh, that there is a credibility working with a CSO and NGO and academic institutes. And uh, that credibility gap somehow can be bridged through more interaction on a platforms like ICC uh, and probably uh, we can work further. Right now, industry will keep moving forward with the way they want to move forward, uh, whether they resist MEPS or whether, whether they resist uh, any other uh, uh, approaches which government wants to take. But I think uh, more interaction with the industry. I think there is enough uh, instruction taking place I would say not enough, but at least up to a certain extent, satisfactory interaction taking place between CSO and Academic Institute and Shikha's uh, work on that uh, uh, R&D collaboration, uh, which she finished probably last year. I don't know how long that was, but that does give us uh, some bit of hope that uh, CSOs and uh, Academic Institute can work together. But I think we need to bring in some industry organization, except for Gokul, we don't have any here. Uh, Gokul also has a reason to be here because the way glass industry perceived the energy efficiency was very different from the way uh, air conditioning industries perform uh, seeing the cooling and the way uh, brick industry is seeing a cooling. So I think uh, it's a time to probably expand ICC membership and or at least have an informal uh, interaction with the industry. Thank you. Thank you, Rajan Bhai. Um, in benefit of uh, time, and I know that uh, people will be also interested uh, or members would be interested to uh, go back and see what's happening uh, on the front of the union budget. So I'll uh, wrap up uh, today's discussion. So what I understood uh, from the members is that uh, we still need to do a uh, maybe a, a more detailed bottom up study to understand how uh, the cooling action plan and uh, net zero targets will uh, work together or how, what would be the impact of uh, cooling on the net zero targets and uh, the city level and uh, uh, state level work i do uh, appreciate the point made by gohul that we need to align our studies and these uh, studies and uh, obviously uh, need to work together as uh, more uh, as consortium and ICC can play an important role in bringing people together who are interested to work in those specific geographies. And finally, uh, in terms of how private sector can be uh, uh, brought in line to the thought process which we have, and I do uh, uh, agree to uh, tend to agree to uh, Rajan Bhai's point that we need to uh, build better credibility of uh, the research as well as civil society in the mind of private sector and then bring private sector together in the helm of maybe ICC or maybe have uh, specific uh, uh, targeted sessions with the private sector. So with that, uh, I would like to conclude uh, today's um, open house discussion and over to you, Simrat. Yes, thanks a lot, Shubhashish. Just one um, request to everybody, if we can switch on our cameras and we can take one uh, picture together. So I request everybody to please switch on their cameras. Thanks a lot, everybody. Uh, to close, I would like to extend my sincere thanks to Sri Jigmit Tapka for his guidance today on this session and also to all the ICC members uh, for your contribution in today's round table. Uh, we also have other interesting sessions lined up in the feed conference for the next two days and I'm sure these sessions will be of deep interest to all of us so please feel free to tune in and we hope to keep organizing such discussions and sessions where we can all cumulative take forward the discussion on sustainable pooling. Uh, please feel free to reach out to us in case you have any ideas on any future events and we'll also keep you posted on the same. So once again, thanks a lot everybody and have a very good day. Thank you.
Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Bye. Thank you.